What's up everybody, Jason Boone here from premiumbeat.com. Today I want to show you how you can mix audio in Premiere's Clip Mixer panel. So let's get started. If you're working with audio in Adobe Premiere Pro, you have a wide array of tools at your disposal. In addition to the audio effects available in the program, you can perform extensive audio mixes in the Track Mixer panel. However, one overlooked and underestimated tool is the Clip Mixer panel. Now, this is very similar to the Track Mixer, however, the Clip Mixer allows you to control keyframing on a clip level. Now, this is very powerful and efficient when you use it in conjunction with the Effect Controls panel. So let's take a step-by-step -step look at how you can quickly mix audio in the Clip Mixer panel. So I have my sample project open where I want to do some mixing. Now this is a short 20 second edit of an artist talking about his artwork. I have some b-roll, some sound bites, and a music clip down here. And what I simply want to do is I want to adjust the volume of this music clip and have it kind of flow and, and go down and up in volume depending on when my interview subject is speaking. So right now I'm set up in a track mixer workflow. I have my track mixer panel open here and I want to change this to clip mixer. So the first thing I need to do is go to window and open up the audio clip mixer. Now if you look, it's, it's kind of similar to the track mixer but it looks like it's, it's a little bit more slimmed down because we don't have as many options when working um, on a clip level. There's quite a bit of options in the track mixer level. So let's take a quick, another look at our track mixer. You can see up here, we have some more options for the track output assignment. We have some more automation modes, but we still have a lot of power with the clip mixer and working in conjunction with the effect controls panel, you can do a lot with this little panel. So let's take a quick look. Now I wanna adjust some more display options. Right now, if you look down here, we're still viewing our track keyframes. There's a big long kind of keyframe rubber band line here. So this is showing us the track keyframes. So to control what keyframes are being displayed on the track, we can go to show keyframes in the track header. And here are our options. And again, right now it's set to track keyframes volume. So I'm gonna switch that to clip keyframes. And if you see the difference here now, the rubber bands uh, are only on the clips. They don't span the whole length of the track. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that to audio track two, switch that to clip keyframes. Now it should be defaulted to clip keyframes if you haven't adjusted it already, but just take a look and just be aware that you can change the display mode. A lot of people can be confused and not know why they're not seeing their keyframes, especially if you wanna work on the track level and your clip, it's defaulted to clip keyframes, it can be quite confusing. Now let's go back over here and adjust a few more options with the display here and I've actually already set these up. And if you control or command click right on the fader bar here, you can see I've adjusted some of these options. I've set show channel volume, that's why you're seeing these two knobs here. And I can adjust these further to kind of customize it to the way that I'd like. So the next thing we wanna do is let's just have a look and a listen at our 20 seconds here. And this music might be a little loud, so I'm gonna bring the volume of this clip down to about negative 12. Now let's have a look. It's figurative, but it's new. I reference classic beauty, but you know, certainly a new twist. When more of the world becomes automated and you have robots and programs, etc., then there's a natural response to make something be, have more of a human touch to it. Okay, and as I said before, we're gonna to wanna to bring the volume up in this gap here and then back down so we can hear the interview sound bites and then back up at the beginning. So I'm only gonna be controlling the volume of this clip here. And just so we can not get confused here, I can rename these tracks. I'm gonna rename this music. And if you look down here, it changes the name down here. And I'll name audio track one, interview. We could have also renamed it down here just by control clicking and select rename. Okay, so now we have both of our tracks set up and ready to go here. So now we wanna record our audio. So to do this here in the clip mixer panel, um, we're, gonna go, we're only gonna record the, uh, make adjustments to the music here. So for this track, we're gonna click this little button here, which is write keyframes. So I'm gonna select that. And next, we wanna select our automation mode. So if we go here to the panel menu settings box, we have two automation modes which is quite different from the track mixer panel. So if I go back and I show you the track mixer panel, we actually have automation mode drop-down menus and we have five different modes here. 
It's a little bit different when you're working on the clip level. So now the difference between touch and latch is simply when you have it set to latch and we make any adjustments on the fly, it's going to stay in that position whenever I release or let go of the fader bar. If it's set to touch, it's going to go back to the previous location when I release it. So let's say I'm playing it on the fly and I drag it down to negative 12 for a few seconds and then I let go, it's going to go back up to zero slowly. So let's set it to, well, let's keep it on touch. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the beginning here and just on the, I'm going to play it back and now we have our right keyframes button selected. So now any adjustments I make here are going to record on the fly. So now let's go ahead and begin our recording. It's figurative, but it's new. I reference classic beauty, but it's certainly a new twist. When more of the world becomes automated and you have robots and programs, etc., then there's a natural response to make something be, have more of a human touch to it. And there we go, as soon as it stops playing, you'll notice that there are all these keyframes. Anytime I move that fader bar, it's going to add some keyframes. And if we go to the beginning, we have a bit of a problem here, because it starts off at zero. So you can go and drag that back down and okay, zoom back out. So now let's have a listen, and we can watch this on the fly here. I'm going to turn our right keyframes button off, and now let's have a listen. We can watch the fader bar and see the keyframes here. It's figurative, but it's new. I reference classic beauty, but it's certainly a new twist. When more of the world becomes automated and you have robots and programs, etc., then there's a natural response to make something be, have more of a human touch to it. Very good. So if we wanted to make any adjustments, I could go back and just overwrite as long as our right keyframes button is selected. We can just overwrite whatever we want and select the automation mode we want. Another cool thing is we can do the same with our pan here. Or I can adjust different channels on the fly. So if I'm playing back and I have the right keyframes button selected, as I adjust the, adjust the channels, those are going to be adjusted as well and keyframed accordingly. Now if we go over to the effect controls panel and select our clip, another cool feature is that we can see all of our keyframes here and we can make any adjustments we want which is much different to the track mixer where you can see the keyframes on the track but you can't easily make any adjustments to it like you can in the effect controls panel here. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality royalty free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.